It's exciting. Oh, that sounds spooky. <laughs> that is really weird. I really don't like it. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's recording. Uh, yeah, so we wanted to uh, quickly or quickly uh, synchronously decide on um, sort of what approach we're going to take with uh, moving the GitLab projects around for the single code base. And there's a couple of different proposals. They will have their, their own pros and cons. Um, and some of this has been discussed in the issues, but uh, it kind of goes back and forth over a longer period of time. We want to uh, finish this in, in, in the next two weeks, if possible. So I figured that the you know, a, a sync meeting would probably be a bit faster to reach a, a decision. Now, the doc lists the uh, proposals that I could think of, uh, the pros and cons. Um, <clears throat> I think we can just quickly go over them and then sort of figure out what everybody's preference is. Um, and then hopefully we can decide <laughs> which approach to take. Uh, so the first one so, is... Yuri, Sorry, I mean, we, we can read all of this. Right. And I think we read all of this. So we don't have sure. to read through it. Um, maybe we obviously like we can just say what options are. We have options of... Um, EE being the new repository, CE being um, uh, closed off, and issues moved from CE to EE, yeah. uh, and then having a new clean FOSS repository. Yes. The other way around as well, EE issues moved to CE, renaming that one, and then um, uh, having a separate FOSS repository. And obviously, the third option is just leave it as is, Move issues into a new pro into new set of projects and uh, archive yeah. the other ones later on. Right? Yes. That's the gist of it. Yeah. Cool. Um, if you want to say your preference, go for it. I think. So I um, I think moving it into CE would be the least amount of work for us, simply because we don't have to move that many issues around. Um, the the thing is, I'm not quite sure how they would affect the um, deployment process for securities. I, I think that should be fine. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we're so so. I thought that, but then anyway, so we have to rename that project anyway. So people are going to have to go through redirects for CE, uh, which is not that big of a deal. Uh, the, the clean repo setup <clears throat> would mean that C and E uh, are untouched. Which is a, I think it's a little more comfortable for security releases and such, but um, <clears throat> workflow-wise, I think it's also annoying because if you then do your security merge request, you have to submit it to the false repo, C, E, and then E, so we actually make that process more difficult. So I'm still leaning towards moving E into C. And there are also, I think, one of the probably the biggest benefits that since most development happens in CE, uh, we retain most of the Git logs. Uh, if we move it into EE, the the logs are there, but a lot of the times, um, at least if you look at Git lane, for example, the lines might uh, point towards the merge commit uh, from merging CE into EE. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Personally, I don't consider a third new repository an option. Like losing all that Git history is, it's really going to be a bad move as far as like blaming stuff and looking up the history of why a line is the way it is. There's too much history there to lose, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, to me, the fact that we cannot move the merge request is also important for me. So I would lean towards merging AE into CE. For, for this particular fact. And also, I, I hope that, um, I mean, I guess that most people don't really care if there's a proprietary code that is merged into CE. Uh, I know that some people will care a lot, but um, I mean, either way, there will be people that won't be happy, I, I think so. 
I think we can, uh, if, we, if it's well explained, uh, that's probably fine. So yeah, I would, I would be for option one. So I didn't understand, Robert, what do you mean about losing history? Why would we lose history with new repositories? It sounded to me like we were just initializing the repository and then copying everything over. Yeah, basically that's the, um, theoretically what you could do is you could um, set up a new repository, I guess, pull it from E or C or whatever, then merge it. Um, that's, that's what I thought we were gonna do. Like we would create a new, two new right. projects, but repositories would be the same and the project would receive the issues that we wanna move. Right, so you could okay. merge it. That's, yeah, uh, that's viable. Then though you effectively end up the same as we merge it into uh, EE, where a lot of the uh, Git blame lines still be the automatic merge commits and that sort of thing. So my concern with, with the, that uh, suggestion of uh, moving everything to CE and then renaming that repository is all of a sudden having um, people, in some cases even automatically, um, clone or receive the proprietary code. Um, also, it also feels like it would be um, a non-transparent move. Like that's, that's the thing I'm worried about, that it's actually non-transparent. Um, that's the con. The pro for that though is um, majority of people wouldn't have to do much. Um, so if you were cloning up until then, you would get a notification, you need to change your remote and that's an action that you need to take, but that's, that's fine. You don't need to go and look for where is that new repository and so on. So that is definitely the advantage. Um, I didn't think about the merge request. I was kind of thinking more about, we would do a triage and close everything that, that is stale and everything that is not stale is gonna be like a small amount of people and that can, um, we can ask them to reopen their MR in a new place. Yeah, I, with the merge request, I thought about just writing a script that just closes all of them and comes like, hey, you know, we're moving to here. Uh, if this is still relevant, please uh, reopen it. Like, not even bother with us triaging because th there's way too many merge requests to uh, triage ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, let's see how many we actually have at this point. Uh, oops. Uh, for CE, we have uh, 918 merge requests, and for EE, 240, so 274. So 1,000. Yeah, more or less. Uh, for CE, the issues is uh, about 17,000, uh, EE, about 4,500. And whichever way you look, this is going to be disruptive. It doesn't really matter which way you cut. It's going to be uh, annoying. Yeah. Issues wise, I would say you know, moving to CE will be less disruptive because we, we have fewer issues. And I think most E issues will probably be from ourselves or well, paid customers, basically. Um, but yeah, the, the thing there is you end up with a CE repository that now contains EE code. Yeah. And that might be worth mentioning. I think if we move C into EE, uh, because we cannot, I think, merge EE into C with Git merge, you'll get a billion conflicts. Uh, you would lose the Git history, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, so I guess we need to kind of define who do we want to um, hurt the most or hurt the least, I guess. <laughs> do we want to hurt ourselves most or users or? So I users. Think, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's kind of like split between everything. So the Git logs, for example, are very important for developers. Now I know a lot of people never look at them, but it's nice being able to figure out, oh, hey, this file was added two years ago and this line is from, you know, whatever. 
um, if you move EE into CE, we lose that ability for EE code. And I think that is, you know, the more I think of it, the more I dislike that. If you move C into EE, um, we, I think we retain that ability because we can just, well, we, we don't really have to merge anything specifically. We just do like a one-time automatic merge of C into E and we're basically good. Lose all the history from before EE existed though, right? Sorry? Or would we lose all the history from before EE existed for CE? Uh, no, no, so, so that oh, that way, yeah, that's a good one. You might lose the very old commits, but... Um, I mean, that's minor, but... Yeah, I think it, it would at some point, you know, if you go far away enough, it will point to some kind of merge commit or something like that. Um, if we set up a separate repository, it's the same process as moving into, so we're merging into E. So there's no, I think, difference in the get logs there. But what if we, maybe I'm not understanding what you just said. So correct me if you already said it, but what if we have CE moving to the FOSS repository? Yeah. So CE becoming that FOSS repository. Right. Um, and then use the merge train to just continue now from that point onwards like all of the history is retained in ce yeah. now named FOSS, and from this moment onwards everything that this project is going to be receiving is only the automat automated merge right. merges we have yeah so i, I think each, um, the the problem is if we take the existing ce repository and we were to do a git merge of ee code into that uh, Git is not gonna like that because they're too they they've, they've, they've diverged completely. Mm -hmm. So I suspect Git will just completely freak out. So you have to basically copy and do like an initial commit of the EE. Code. Okay, yeah. For I think for the false repository. Uh, uh, wait, hold on, hold on. No, because it's okay. If we turn CE in the false repository, um, I think. Ooh, yeah, I have to test. I think we might be able to retain the Git logs without merge conflicts, but because um, effectively what we do with the sync, we just remove essentially all source code, copy over the EE version, right? And, you know, remove the proprietary code, etc. So I think the first commit is going to be like a big commit, maybe not even. But long story short, I think that might be possible. I have to test to see how it behaves. Um, and then we could move into E, so we you know, retain the Git logs, CE stays open source, uh, which might even come with the benefit that we, in theory, might not even have to rename repositories. So we could keep it community edition and enterprise, but I'm not sure. No. The idea should be like that we have one repository that's named GitLab, that is the source, that is the right. canonical place to go to. The first one is your convenience only. It had some history retained. It doesn't right. have any proprietary mm -hmm. code. You can clone it there, but no issues, no merge requests, yeah. nothing. It's just a, you can clone this without right. it. Yeah, so I, I think the more I think about it, uh, the Git logs in particular, the more I'm sort of leaning towards moving into EE. Um, one the downside there is we have to move all the issues and stuff. Yeah, so we have to move, you know, 17,000 issues. Uh, and also, I think for the security releases, we cannot immediately rename GitLab C to GitLab false whatever. No. Anything uh, we do is going to be, it's going to have to be backwards compatible for three releases, no matter what. Right. Well, And I, I do yes. think we can rename GitLab EE to just GitLab. Yeah. Um, since we retain the stable branches and all that, like it's just a different name. So actually, I think in theory, we could rename GitLab C also to GitLab false. Um, <laughs> just for security, it, it means we have to keep merge requests enabled, I think, so that for security releases, you can... But for hmm. security releases, we use devgitlab.org and whatever the name in there right. is, it does That's not true. matter. So we just need to think about how are we going to sync those branches so that people right. can do the development for a couple yeah, so of months. Well, so, so so we want to move the security workflow, right? We're probably not going to do that like the next month, but maybe 
uh, in the next two months? Uh, in the next two months, we're going to be doing it, right? Right. So that's going to be a big move be, anyway. Yeah. Right. There might be, let's say, one month where the GitLab false repository is. Uh, people will submit their either their private merge request or on dev. But either way, it can it will get security stuff into it uh, from dev or these private repositories, and not necessarily the the upstream uh, canonical repository. So, mm -hmm. in, in other words, it essentially has two inputs for like a month: uh, dev and uh, the canonical one. I think it's fine uh, since you know it's only one month for something. And if we think it's a problem, we can just delay moving the security workflow by a month, you know, maybe give it some more testing, et cetera. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think the big issue there is moving 17,000 issues. Um, and we have an API for it. We can do that kind of stuff in parallel, et cetera. Uh, knowing our API, I would not be surprised if you know 5,000 issues in, it just completely stops it like you just, Yorick, you know. perfect because that means you get to improve the product <laughs> well, I, yeah. see see this is how we go like you know 100 level steep of yak shaving it's like i want to do this i know anyway it you know it it's a legitimate point if if that is our only concern like it's going to be hard moving seventeen thousand issues <clears throat> i agree it right. is but if that is the biggest item I think that's something that we should take. No, and I think we can control that by just limiting the number of issues we do in parallel and just by putting enough time in between so we can say, oh, hey, every day we move I know, 5,000 yeah. issues, whatever. But, Remy, you just did something with, with uh, the GitLab bots, right? Yeah, it was... All the issues. It was with labels. So we just yeah. added labels. Um, but, yeah, I think moving the issues is not... Is not um, the biggest problem because even if we move the issues like over a period of one month, let's say, uh, they will still be uh, accessible in the force, uh, yeah. like the C uh, yeah. project right. in the meantime. So I think that that's not uh, the biggest problem. Um, I was just thinking about the dev, uh, like the security um, merge requests. Would it be possible to like set up the um, the uh, the automatic sync uh, to the first um, project, but on dev, like we would sync the stable branches on dev from the EE to the uh, first right. um, project. So if, like if we, uh, the merge tree it just supports you know, arbitrary source and target repository mm -hmm. branches. Um, so, yeah, I think so in theory we could set up like for all the stable branches we could set up the, the sync. In theory, yes, I think we we haven't really done that with Dev because there's always been the fear that because it sort of diverges security wise that you run into like really weird conflicts, conflicts that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think for the security workflow, so the process. Let's say we have one month where we have to submit stuff to the false repository. Um, on Dev, we just keep the names, at least for now. You know, later we rename GitLab HQ to whatever, but mm -hmm. for now the names stay the same. Um, so people do their security workflow there as usual. Then when we want to sync to .com as a release manager, you have to know, okay, uh, on Dev, GitLab HQ, GitLab goes to GitLab false, and GitLab HQ slash uh, enterprise goes to GitLab. It's because you have to know, oh, the namings are now a little different. But I think the process is mostly the same. Uh, since CE does not contain any EE code, nothing really changed mm -hmm. there. Since EE already had the enterprise code, again, nothing really changes there. Uh, I think, and so in, in that scenario, I think the the biggest frustration is just going to be for users. Now, like, oh, my link is now gitlab-org slash gitlab instead of CE. But... Uh, when you move issues, GitLab already, I think, redirects you. Uh, yeah. And in the old issue, it shows, like, you know, hey, it's been moved, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And we can extend that, that when we move those issues, we, you know, post a comment automatically, like, hey, you know, we're moving this to here, yada, yada, read up or here. Yep. That's necessary, <clears throat> I think. Um, I think that's notification. Yeah, that messaging is going to be really important. Right. I, I think the big frustration there is people going to say, like, oh, hey, you know, I have, like, a million merge requests open. I don't want to resubmit them all to this new target project. Yeah. That's a bit unfortunate. Like, there's no way we can automatically move merge requests. 
Um, Feature request. I mean, we could, we could, uh, like you said, I think we could have a script that just uh, reopen the. Yes. Yeah, so so the, the tricky thing, if, if the merge request is submitted from one of our branches, we could, in theory, do it. We'd have to build it manually, but we could. Yeah. For forks, we could not. Yeah, uh, for forks, it's. Then uh, I think yeah. if we were to move it, the author will be changed to whatever bot we used to move the merge request, mm -hmm. then the author might lose their permissions. Yeah. Um, so I. I would just be inclined to say, hey, sir, we're going to close this. Please reopen it here, which does have mm -hmm. the added benefit that, you know, those merge requests from five years ago, they're yeah. probably not going to get reopened. So we automatically clean up the... the yeah, yeah, the backlog of stale merge requests would be <laughs> much lighter. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think yeah, we just have to make that very clear. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I do think that if if you want to have this single code base by let's say uh, the twenty second, we are a little short notice. I think two weeks of telling the entire community, okay, you know, this is going to happen mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in the next week. Um, but what we might be able to do is leave the names for now and at least internally start moving to GitLab Enterprise. So, you, for example, take a list of the uh, take a look at the issues. And we just move those of people that we know are GitLab employees, like they, they created them, so we can, you know, they're familiar with the process basically. Uh, or maybe just recent issues, something like that. Either way, a subset. That way, we can sort of test. Okay, does the API like this, etc. <clears throat> and then for merge requests, I think we can, um, we can maybe say, okay, hey, starting from today, submit them to Enterprise Edition. And you know, five days from now, we'll just close all the ones submitted by GitLab employees. That way people have some time to move it over and we don't get this case where you move everything over, but at the same time, new merge requests come in. Um, so let me add that to the doc. Uh, some of your team members move uh, with the uh, Yeah, and, and Marin, as you said, um, when you talked about the, the automation that we did with triage ops, uh, we could actually, um, we already have the ability to uh, like uh, filter the, the issues by team members. Mm -hmm. So we could say uh, the automation could move all the issues uh, authored by someone from GitLab. Um, and we can also like limit the number of issues we move at a certain like you can yeah just to see controls the rate yeah. yeah so yeah we, that's uh, that's a good idea we could uh, already experiment that um, like just with dry runs um, so yeah. yeah and I think all labels that we use are the same for Z and E mm -hmm. yeah most of them are yeah group labels yeah. right uh, yeah I think since CE is left all the so I think in theory, no tooling would have to be changed there. Yeah. Because uh, we don't suddenly change to this completely different repository. We, we, we might have to change that once we rename things. But for now, I think uh, we can sort of do this incrementally. Um, let's see, anything else? Uh, no. I think the only there, thing... There's something we can do at like the, the proxy level where even after we do rename then we can kind of transparently redirect requests for CE to right. boss and E to the canonical one. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking more of tooling that would not honor HTTP redirects. I, I think the GitHub API client honors it uh, and stuff like that, but there, there might be you know, something somewhere deep down that doesn't like this. Um, but I think the renaming, we can do that uh, after the 22nd. That is, that is the main reason, like all the redirects and all of that stuff is probably one of the main reasons also why we could consider just having new projects. Right. Um, well, so, so there's the interesting thing though. If, if we move into EE, we don't actually have to do anything for the release because the repository we deploy from and everything is the same. True, true. Mm -hmm. So we do basically buy ourselves, uh, in theory, infinite amounts of time. Mm -hmm. All the, the moving and everything. Whereas if you move to C, that you know, it's a different story or yep. yeah. separate repository. True. 
And also uh, about the, the redirects, I think uh, GitLab, when you when you rename a project, the, the remote is automatically like redirecting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's already some redirects. So maybe yeah, and I think in a console, it will then show like, hey, you know, it's been moved, please. You need to move, yeah. 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 Uh, so maybe that, that, that would be enough. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's enough, you're right. So let's see, let's just add a quick voting, I guess. We have an overview. Voting, uh, Yorick, bleh. Uh, let me see into EE. Uh, uh, right, so uh, I changed my mind. So yeah, move C into E. Yeah, I'm more now inclined to say C to E as well. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, you are vo voting against us, right? Yes, I'm the voice of the scientist first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's that makes the most sense. Right. Uh, and we should also, like when we move the issues, we should also add an EE label. Uh, no, we are moving C into EE. Which uh, means we should add EE label right away yeah, to all yeah, of right. the EE issues. Yeah, yeah that was. Uh, yeah. Oh, you mean that's, uh, you mean the issues for like EE part of the, the product? Yeah. But they were yeah. once exclusive to EE, yeah. Yeah. All oh, right, yeah. But we, we want to, to label all the current issues in the EE project. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, hold on. That's a good point. That's something I'm told. That, uh, that's gonna update it, like the updated app of every single issue, which is kind of annoying. You can do it in that's, batches. If it's that's fine. We, I mean, we did that for. We the, already, yeah. Into stage <laughs> okay. Labor, so, just, we we just have, we just have to give a big heads up, and that's fine. Yeah. yeah. And if people are not uh, subscribed to this label, you won't receive any notifications. So that's right. That's, that's actually is it true yeah huh. okay. yeah if, if you are just adding a label um it's transparent uh, unless you are subscribed to it uh, yeah. so uh, what i'll do is i'll update the, the final uh, let me add it, that issue uh the final changes issue so that it contains these new steps uh yep. including uh step one uh at EE label to exist. Blech. That's the one we'll get otherwise. <clears throat> uh, so it's a list of steps there. Uh, then I guess what we can do starting Monday, uh, we can start outlining, okay, which issues, etc. do we want to move first? Uh, make a script for that. It should be fairly straightforward. Um, then I think the biggest challenge there is going to be how do we communicate this internally and how do we communicate this externally? So, Yorick, I, I need to leave right now. Right. So just, I have one ask for you. Sure. Um, lay out completely how the future situation is going to look. Right. Like the names of the repository, what moved where, what kind of actions that requires and what kind of, in a separate place, what kind of communication needs to happen. Community, right. internal... Um, and so on. And I'm more than happy to, to take on the communication part. Um, you can like, like, and we should split up right. what action needs to go where. Sure. So I'm going to leave the, the, the call now and Remy and the two of you can discuss like whether quality can help because you obviously have expertise in uh, all of this, uh, at least the issues uh, part mm -hmm. um, and working with community. So um, um, maybe we can kind of divide and conquer on this. It's an, a huge undertaking. Like yeah. we, we definitely do need help and expertise there. All right. Yeah. Thanks, All right. everyone. Yeah, see you. Cool. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so I'll add that to the issue. Um, uh, you know, with all the details, et cetera. Uh, I think that's it for now, unless uh, any of you wants to discuss more. I'm sure while I'm in the shower or something, I'll be like, oh, shit. <laughs> and as usual, it goes like you step away from the computer, like, oh, damn, yeah, th there's that thing. Um, but yeah, we can just add that to the issue. I think the, you know, the specific details, we're not going to do it now. We'll do it next week. Uh, yeah. Uh, after, you know, the weekend to think about, oh, you know, is there maybe this or that that we have to take mm -hmm. care of? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a promise for a, a bad weekend. <laughs> 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 like thinking about all the edge cases. <laughs> yeah. All right, in that case, uh, you know, 
thanks all for uh, joining and have a nice uh, morning or evening. Yeah, thanks. See ya. Thanks, so. Bye.